vacation. It's a funny concept when you think about it. Work, grind, stress, long commutes to the office, save, budget, plan, seat sale hunting, researching activities. All just to spend a few days with those that mean the most to us. And in those few days, we feel obligated to pack as much in as we possibly can because vacation only happens once or maybe twice a year. My family and I took everything that Mazatlan had to offer and then some. Stay tuned and we'll show you what happened. Buen dia, amigos. This week we're on the west coast of Mexico for some sun, sand, and cerveza here in amazing Mazatlan. We'll be showing you our favorite tourist attractions that this flip-flop friendly city has to offer. All the things that you can't miss if you're coming here for a visit. And be sure to check out Mazatlan part two, where we'll highlight the nightlife here and the amazing contrast of experiences after sunset. Just like that inevitable awkward handshake from that friend you're not really friends with, here's the part of the video where we ask you to give us a like, toss us a comment below, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Mazatlan is situated on the Pacific coast of Mexico in the state of Sinaloa. Initially established as a small fishing village, Mazatlan was founded in 1531. In the mid-1800s, the French invaded Mexico for silver, gold, and strategic access to the United States, leaving a cultural stamp on Mazatlan that is not evident in many other places of Mexico. By the mid-19th century, it became a key hub for trade and maritime activities, contributing to its cultural diversity and economic growth. Although the largest shrimping operation in Mexico operates out of Mazatlan, fishing has been edged out by tourism as the highest grossing industry here. There are 15,000 hotel rooms here now, and that number is growing. With a population of just over 500,000, Mazatlan, and everybody that comes to see her, enjoys a tropical savanna climate, characterized by warm temperatures throughout the year. Average temperatures range from about 21 to 32 degrees Celsius or 70 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit with higher temperatures during the summer months. Rainy season here is from June to September with the drier climate prevailing through the rest of the year. We're here in December and the temperature has been great with daily highs around 27 degrees Celsius. So, how do you get here? Well, this time that's an easy one. You just fly in. Even if you live in Mexico, you'll likely fly here. The airport here is General Rafael Buelna International Airport and services domestic and international flights. It's about a 30 minute taxi ride into town and should cost you about 400 pesos one way. So let's go see some stuff. We'll start in the Centro Historico Zone and soak up some culture in Pozuela Machada. The architectural style is different here than in most historically colonized cities in Mexico. This neoclassical style was popular in France at the time that France invaded Mexico. The local French military headquarters was built right here in 1864. It was abandoned soon after as the United States helped Mexico oust the French through the late 1860s. 
This was once a crumbling, depressed area, but was revitalized in the 1990s to its current state. The square was named after Juan Machado, a local philanthropist who contributed to the development of Mazatlan. We're here visiting just before Christmas, hence the decorations that the kids are enjoying. A few blocks away, teasing us around every corner, is Cathedral Basilica de la Immaculate Concepcion, an imposing sentinel of a structure. It led us through the Pozuela Republica, which was pretty in and of itself, but the cathedral is a showstopper. Wait, what? We can't go inside? Nah, it's fine. We actually had to come back the following day just so we could show you around inside because it's awesome. Don't worry, we got you. Construction of the cathedral began in the 1850s. Almost immediately after work started, it was suspended for nearly 20 years due to the conflict between the French and the Mexicans. Work resumed in 1875, and it was eventually completed in 1899. In 1937, it was granted Basilica status by the Pope. It has undergone several renovations and improvements over the years. The most peculiar addition, though, is the 28 stained glass windows displaying a Jewish star. There was no solid information I could find about these or why they're there, only speculation. So if anybody knows about these stained glass windows, please drop a comment below. And just another block away is Pino Suarez Market. Great for snacks, souvenirs. Fresh juices. Even meat. And if you've never been to a real Mexican Mercado, please make time for this. Next stop on our Central Mazatlan walking tour is the Croquia Cristo Rey de Mazatlan. The kids were super excited to see another church. And as it turned out, their prayers were answered. Closed. Moving on. Okay, the kids are getting tired of walking. So after stopping for a quick coco frio, my father-in-law and I ventured bravely onward to hunt for sustenance, while the women and children sought the comfort of our condo's air conditioning. We hailed the Pomonia and headed to the fresh fish market area that we'd heard about earlier. What's the Pomonia? Good question. A Pomonia is basically a cheaper, open-air taxi invented here in Mazatlan. They were built out of the frame and guts of old Volkswagen Beetles, so they have rear-mounted engines and they sound great. They're called Pomonias because they took so much of the local taxi trade that in retaliation, the taxi owners told all their clientele that the open-air concept would cause them pneumonia. They've since managed to coexist, but I do recommend trying the Pomonia for the experience if nothing else. 
Arriving in the fish market area, known as Los Chanjueras Expendio de Mariscas, wow, did we find what we were looking for. About four blocks from the ocean is a whole street full of fresh seafood vendors. They were just starting to pack up for the day when we arrived, but luckily we got there just in time to buy a kilogram of jumbo prawns and some fresh fish. Cleaned, shelled, gutted, all of this cost us 300 pesos. Yanked from the ocean that morning, in the pan that evening. I went to bed very happy, full of amazing seafood and some ice cold beer. After all of that exploring, the next day was a beach day. We hit the golden zone and wandered out to the beach where we knew the island boat taxis were. We were headed to Isla de Venados, or Deer Island. Now, I had done my research and I knew that the average price to get over to Deer Island was 200 pesos per person. So, for the six of us, I negotiated a thousand pesos and we also rented chairs and umbrellas for another 150 pesos. And with that, we were promptly taxied over with the promise to be returned in three hours. Well, we chose three hours, but we could have stayed much longer. The times are between 10 and 5, so if you want to go at 10 and return at 11, you can do that. If you want to go at 10 and return at 5, you can do that. It's all the same price. Once we got to the island, there was other activities we could have purchased as well. Jet skis, and this catamaran thing. But we were happy to just sit while the kids splashed around in the water. It was a great day. The next day we were up and at it relatively early to skip the midday sun. We hit the Golden Zone Strip, which has a bit of a Vegas feel to it, especially at night, and headed south along the Malacone, or walkway along the water. At the northernmost point of the Malacone, is where you'll find the Mazatlan sign. After a quick snap, we continued south. Mazatlan boasts the longest malecone in the world. At 21 kilometers or 13 miles, it's quite a hike. To one side is all rolling blue ocean, peppered with Super Mario Brothers like islands. To the other side, you get gentrified high rises, colonial landmarks, restaurants and bars, monuments. and dramatic jutting cliffs. Oh. 
The views are amazing. We were even able to catch the local cliff divers towards the south end of the Malakal. It was incredible to watch. He really did risk severe injury or death for the group of us that gathered to watch. You can probably see that he had a spotter floating in the water, signaling him when the larger swells would come in, as the tide was relatively low. Obviously, these guys do this for money, so be sure to have cash on you when you go to watch them. I gave each diver 100 pesos. A little further south down the Malacone is Old Mazatlan. Very pretty, and you can see that French neoclassical style here too. 21 kilometers is a long way for little legs to travel, so if you have kids, plan to break this up into chunks. I was the only one that made it to the end of the Malacone. At the south tip, you'll find a very detailed bronze statue of local celebrity Pedro Infante from a scene in the 1951 movie Hatora Makina. Pedro and I only had enough time together for a quick Coco Frio before I was due to meet up with the rest of the crew at Parque Central. Just north of Centro, and a few blocks east of the Malacón, Parque Central is a well-maintained 74-acre walking area. It opened in 2021 and admission is free. There's a small zoo here, but it was closed when we came. After letting the kids play a bit, we decided to head to Mazatlan Aquario, which was right beside it. I was a little bit skeptical of this one because of the price. 380 pesos per adult and 280 pesos per kid seemed steep. But after a discount for this and a discount for that, I shrugged my shoulders and handed over a thousand pesos for us all to enter. And I'm glad I did. This was epic. First was the bird show. All in Spanish, but it didn't really matter. It was great. The kids were captivated, and it was very well done. After another small bird exhibit, we entered the aquarium. This was awesome. Some of the highlights, there's an interactive portion where the kids got to touch some of the seafood, uh, I mean aquatic species. For a few extra pesos you can buy a little cup of food and feed the stingrays, which Harper loved. She really lit up and I know it's something she'll always remember. This was very well done, I recommend it. It took us about two hours and the kids had a blast and, and we really did too, it was awesome.
As I often do, I urged us to one more must-see attraction before we called it a day. Alfaro Lighthouse. At the southern tip of Mazatlan's peninsula is Faro Parque Natural. And at the top of that is the lighthouse, and what we're told is an amazing view. Admission was free, but they don't want you to bring any food in. You can buy drinks at the bottom, and if you do that, be sure to use the bathroom at the bottom because there's nothing at the top. Additionally, there is a glass bottom sky deck at the top, and you can buy tickets at the bottom. There's nothing to buy at the top, so if you want to go, you gotta buy the tickets at the bottom. We were told that it's a two hour hike, which seems daunting at this point in the day, to be honest, but it turned out to be exaggerated. It is a two hour experience, and maybe that's what they mean. The hike up is all paved, and as you switch back in your ascent, you have steps and handrails for the steeper portion. 346 steps to be exact. This was a pretty easy hike and the kids did just fine. Between the views and the wildlife that we encountered all the way up, we were taking our time. It took us about 25 minutes to get to the top. The view did not disappoint. Amazing. Here's the glass bottom sky deck. We opted not to do this as the research I've done made it seem like the view was just as stunning from the ground. And I'm happy with my decision, but you do you. Life seems to fly at you from all angles. And when you're stuck in your thoughts like, I need to stop for milk on the way home, or that report is due on Friday and I haven't even looked at it yet, or the car's making noise again, you lose sight of what's important. But vacation, it forces you to get out of your thoughts and into your feels, pushing your comfort zone, prompting experiences, and subsequently creating moments. Life's little snapshots, treasures you take with you wherever you go. Vacation. Shouldn't every day feel like this? Hey, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, toss us a comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our misadventures through Mexico. Hasta luego, amigos.